we know now how um, crazy she got, what a stalker she was, yeah. how manipulative she is, and here she is blaming Travis. Yeah. And, uh, uh, as a as a former lawyer, I could tell you the legal term for what you just heard is making crap up. Um, <laughs> and, and here's a little advice for anybody out there who's thinking of murder. When you're getting interrogated, don't use the word guilty in any context. Don't I feel guilty? I'm guilty I didn't work out more. I, uh, chocolate is my guilty pleasure. It's not a good thing. She's manipulative. But I'm shocked, Dr. Drew, that people are so outraged that she's manipulative. Everybody manipulates. Human beings, dogs manipulate for food. Women manipulate using sex. It's been done for centuries, for years. The caveman only invented fire because there was a woman whining, it's too cold to have sex. Well, uh, Paul, Paul, hold on. I think you, you and Evie must have been a set of twins separated at birth because <laughs> Evie thinks everyone's manipulative and evil. So yes. I bet, Evie, you can relate to what Paul's talking about and, and, and specifically what he's... I would interesting to, to know whether or not you would read as much into the term guilty as he did. Well, you know... It's okay. People do use that term, but it's funny as far as manipulative. People lie in the interview room. People would lie to me all the time, every day in, day out. It's funny because there's actual law that says you can't lie to a federal agent. It's called Title 18, 1001, false statements. And I could never charge anybody with that because everybody lied. The U.S. Attorney's Office would laugh at me when I would say, this person lied. You know what? I, let's, I got to share with both of you guys. I mean, as a physician, people lie to me all the time, and I feel like my job is to figure out sort of what's truth behind it and just expect the lying. But, but you know, but, but my my feeling is on this is that the fact that she lies and manipulates has sort of become this massive thing in our culture right now and in the media in the sense that. Uh, men and women are looking at this through two different prisms this idea of her sexuality and that she's manipulative women are angry about it I think much more so than men and want the death penalty almost jealous in a way and I don't know what to be jealous about because her life is over it's like being jealous of Lincoln because he had better seats at the theater right <laughs> meanwhile men are looking like well she's awfully attractive and cute maybe we should just give her a life sentence because men look at somebody like that and go wow look at the boobs on that maniac so I, 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 well, I think I, Sam I think he's right no, I think he's I, no, there's all, still, all, on. we're all not our attitudes about men and women are being played out in this I trial. Think we he's are right. there's I think he's some right. truth, of course. There's some underlining itty bitty truth. I am not jealous. Most women are not jealous. We see somebody that murdered her ex lover three times over, and then the most okay. uh, frustrating okay. part of it is how she's sitting in court, Dr. Drew, and lying well, and but getting away with it because but, men want to believe her. But wait, 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 Paul, hold on. I want okay. to hear from Denise because Denise, do you where do you ring in on this? Do you think well, Paul's see, right? No, well, I'm listening to uh, what she's doing in that in that interview room. I'm not listening to her words. I'm looking at her affect, the fact that yes. she is just so flat. She doesn't get frustrated. She doesn't get angry. She doesn't yell. I mean, anybody in a room being accused of murdering somebody is going to get mad, tired, frustrated, evil, hysterical, something. Her affect is completely flat, which well, tells me she's very comfortable with what she, she did. Or she's sick. Flat affect like is a sign of it. psychiatric illness, too. Paul, what do you say? Well, listen, I, I don't read into that. I think the reality is that you have a woman here who's clearly been manipulative all of her life for, for whatever reason. The problem is she's become a celebrity defendant. And when you come as a celebrity defendant in our culture, you're now famous. And so one group of people want you to get off easy because you're famous, and another one should ha hang you by the highest yard arm. And the reality is that people don't understand that it's over for her. She's been convicted of murder. It's like, like people, it's like acting like she's getting off or something. She's either going to have life or, or the death penalty. Right. It's like watching the Titanic and turning it off halfway through and going, well, that was a feel good romance. <laughs> like, what? Evie, Evie, I see you thinking out there. What are you saying? Yeah, so I want to touch on regards to her blaming Travis. That's actually very common. It's, it's done almost always in the interview room where the offender blames or projects blame onto the victim. And I would actually use that. And I would use that to help elicit information. It sound, it's going to sound bad and very manipulative on my part, but I would, I would blame the victim. I would say, yes, this victim did something to entice you to do this behavior. And then I would almost get on the side of someone like a Jordi Arias. And then that would allow them to feel comfortable enough to tell me the truth. All I need is that confession. Yeah, but Denny, it's very different somebody doing their job, you know, to using a technique to get somebody to be honest or at least to I, give them the truth than somebody who's manipulating to get away with murder. Right. Well, I think if they had given her a woman interrogator, they may have gotten a little more information out of her because women Oh, Emmy says women, yes. Sam says yes. Sam, she say would yes. not I have done that coy, you know, that coy little sexual Wait, energy thing right. to try can, and play the room. I, I think they would have gotten more out of her. And she's so I, lackadaisical about it. The way 
you know, you, right. you mentioned that the flat well, affect, but it's her okay. almost thinking, it's Hold her on. almost thinking that she can talk her way out of it. Well, that's what she is thinking. Legs. Yes. It's unbelievable, the confident. confidence. Paul, last okay, words. Listen, th this gets back to my point earlier on about manipulation, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make say something that's going to get everybody outraged on, on this panel and probably at home. You can make the argument that this is unfair to her. There have been, since 1976, 37 executions in Arizona, and there have been a heck of a lot more capital murders. So a lot of people have gotten life sentence. Now, why is this case become so hot about the issue of death penalty because it's become this sort of media sensation and she's this there's a sexuality about her and it's polarizing and uh, on some level you sort of look at it and go well why doesn't she just get the life sentence and move on you know so yeah. she's manipulative all murderers are manipulative they're murderers yes they're not nice people 